This video is brought to you by Audible. The look of Gotham City has evolved throughout the years. With each new iteration, the city molds and adapts to fit the tone of that particular story. For example, in the 1960s television show starring Adam West, Gotham City was reduced to a simple setting devoid of any defining characteristics. That's because the show was mainly filmed on backlots and sound stages, but it fit with the show's overall lighthearted, campy tone. It wasn't really until 1986 that Gotham City began to take on the gothic, dystopian aesthetic that has come to define the city with Frank Miller's groundbreaking comic, The Dark Knight Returns. In the four-issue miniseries, it's the bubbling tension of rampant crime against the backdrop of a massive heat wave throughout Gotham that causes an older Batman to finally come out of retirement. In the opening lines of Sam Hamm's screenplay for the 1989 Batman film, Gotham is described as if hell had erupted through the sidewalks. Ominous skyscrapers and smoke smother the city in perpetual darkness. Set designer Anton Furst tried to imagine a city run by extortion and crime, and deliberately mixed clashing architectural styles to make Gotham City the ugliest and bleakest metropolis imaginable. The bleak hellscape of Gotham perfectly enhanced the darker tone of Tim Burton's Batman. And in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, Gotham was comprised of a balance of sets, but also on-location shooting in booming metropolises like Chicago and Pittsburgh, which helped give the story a sense of authenticity, as if Batman existed today in our world. Ever since Frank Miller's iconic comic book, The Dark Knight Returns, Gotham City has become a living, breathing organism, a character in its own right every bit as vital as Batman, the Joker, Commissioner Gordon, and all other characters that inhabit the city of Gotham. And I think one of the most dynamic, fully realized portrayals of Gotham City was in the cartoon Batman, the animated series. The series drew visual inspiration from Tim Burton's gothic aesthetic, from his films Batman and Batman Returns, and were also inspired by Max Fleischer's Superman cartoons from the 1940s, with their cinematic quality and beautifully rendered movement. Creators Bruce Timm and Eric Radomski wanted to create a series similar to Fleischer's Superman, but they also wanted to put their own personal spin on the superhero world. They did so by combining elements from film noir and art deco. In order to achieve the film's noir look, with its overall sense of darkness, looming shadows, and stylized lighting, Eric Radomski had the ingenious idea of animating Gotham's landscapes on black paper, as opposed to the industry standard of dark colors on white paper. This way, as opposed to suffocating the light out of the entire page, the animators were able to instead bring the dim light of Gotham out of the darkness. Not only did it save the animators a lot of time from having to paint in the dark imagery time and time again, but it also reinforced the story's overall mood and both Batman and Gotham's sensibilities. When Gotham City did emerge from the shadows, it was in the striking appearance of Art Deco. Art Deco was the popular decorative art style of the 1920s and 30s, most notably in design and architecture. Frivolous and gaudy in appearance, the designs were comprised of stylized patterning in upholstery, cascading glasswork, angular furniture, zigzag patterns, and heavy rounded shapes. Geometry was at the center of the decorative process, and the design was added to it until it eventually became a growing organism. At the 1933 Century of Progress Fair held in Chicago, the futuristic nature of the designs promoted the technological revolution as an antidote to the Depression. And at the 1939 World's Fair in New York, it provided a fantasy vision of the future. Art Deco became the aesthetic for the mechanized age. Skyscrapers multiplied rapidly in the downtown areas of cities across America, transforming the skylines. And these new skyscrapers represented power, prestige, luxury, and glamour. In Batman the Animated Series, film noir and art deco blended together beautifully to create what Bruce Timm coined as dark deco. It looked as if the Chicago World's Fair never ended, and art deco, with all its mechanized style and hedonistic luxury, evolved into a hellish nightmare, where the haves and have-nots live side by side, and where evil runs rampant. Gotham became a city that existed outside of time, a city where futuristic technology like cell phones, computers, and police airships coincide with black and white televisions and vintage cars and clothes from the past. The creators also used the sepia color scheme to signal flashbacks within the storyline and used intro title cards reminiscent of classic films and TV shows, which further enhanced this otherworldly timelessness. 
All of these aspects coalesced to create a Gotham that feels truly unique. A Gotham that perfectly reinforces the overall themes of the series, and most importantly, a Gotham that needs Batman. This video is brought to you by Audible. I'm so excited to partner with Audible again because I'm a huge fan of audiobooks. I'm a slow reader and hardly have time in my busy schedule to sit down and read. But with Audible, you're able to integrate audiobooks into your busy schedule. I listen in the shower, in the car, while I'm cooking and cleaning, or when I'm exercising outside. And right now, Audible is giving my viewers a 30-day trial with an audiobook and two Audible originals for free. All you have to do is go to audible.com slash the elk or text the elk one word to 500 500. Right now I'm reading Marvel Comics The Untold Story, which chronicles the history of Marvel Comics, creators like Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, and the iconic superheroes they helped create over a 70 year span. If you're a fan of comic books, I can't recommend the title enough. Audible members can choose three titles every month one audiobook, and two Audible originals that you can't find anywhere else. Not only is this a great way to access a ton of content, but it's also a fantastic way to help support Entertain the Elk so I can make more videos. So again, go to audible.com slash the elk or text the elk to 500 500 and start listening to audiobooks right now. Tuesday is new video day here at Entertain the Elk, so if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe below. That way you don't miss any new content whenever it comes out. And also, make sure you click the bell below, so that way you can get notified whenever a new video comes out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and share it with a friend, and leave me a comment below. Tell me, what's your favorite Batman iteration? Maybe it's a cartoon like Batman the Animated Series, or maybe it's from one of the live action films like Tim Burton's, Christopher Nolan's, or maybe even Zack Snyder's. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll see you all next time.